it's Lucy and today I'm doing my July wrap up. I'm sitting on my bed, I got a bed by the way, so I'm sitting on my bed and in theory my bookshelf will be behind me. So in the month of July I had a lot going on. I feel like I've mentioned it in almost every video I've done for the past month and a half, but I moved, I am now in Atlanta, Georgia. And remember all those times that I was like, oh I'm not sure how much reading I'm gonna get done, because I don't know how I'm going to be busy with like work and everything. Well, I read 13 books in July, so yeah. I don't want to take even more time than it's going to take to talk about 13 books, so let's get into the books that I read. The first book I finished in July was Freshman by Tom Ellen and Lucy Iveson. I received this book from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review. I gave this book four stars and I really enjoyed it. Freshman follows two teenagers who are just starting university in England. I forgot what city or whatever they were from, but they're about to start their freshman year. It's not called freshman in England, but they Americanized the American version, so it's called freshman. I think in the UK the book is called Freshers. We follow the two main characters through their first semester of university and all the trials and tribulations of that. Like I said, I'm really glad I read this. It had me laughing. This book was so funny. I did not expect to laugh so much, but it was just so funny, like all the scenarios and just like the things the characters said were funny. It kind of made me nostalgic for my freshman year because like there were some things that I couldn't really relate to, but a lot of things that I could, like are the female main character we follow forms like a close bond with people on her floor and I can relate to that. That was like my freshman year in college. I loved the cast of characters, they were all hilarious and brought their own personalities to the table. And while the book was really funny, it did manage to bring in slightly darker elements and handle them really well. I would recommend this book if you're looking for a book about people who are entering university or college. This is a good one to read. The next two books I have to talk about I'm going to be lumping together because they're basically the same kind of thing. The books are Adulted is a Myth and Big Mushy Happy Lump by Sarah Anderson. Sarah Anderson has an Instagram and a Tumblr where she posts like relatable comics from her like life, like being an introvert and all those things. And these books were just compilations of some of the comics that she's posted already and some new ones. And I enjoyed both of them. I gave them both four stars. I found the second one to be a little more relatable, but, but they were still both hashtag relatable, specifically for me. And I imagine other girls slash women who are like just starting like being an adult and like are more introverted. I imagine you'll also find this stuff kind of relatable. I thought the second one had some formatting issues. The second one included multi-page comics, which was cool and interesting, but it placed them in a weird way. Like it was like the majority of the book was single page comics. And then, you know, towards the end, and there's like four multi-page comics, which is fine, but then their last two pages are like more single page comics. The first 15 lives of Harry August by Claire North. This is about a man named Harry August, as the title suggests who is one of the select few people who gets to live his life over and over again. So like the basic gist of it is that, say he's born in 1904, he lives his life, lives to be like 85 or whatever, and dies in the 90s. And then he's born again in 1904, but he remembers his whole previous life. A very small portion of the population also lives their lives like that, and like I said, he's one of them. And so, He's living his many lives until at the end of one of his lives he's on his deathbed and he receives a very important message and we follow what he now has to do after he receives the message. And I gave this book four stars. The whole summary really intrigued me. I'm not a huge fan of time travel stories but I thought this time travel was done in an interesting way that wasn't too confusing. It still had some problems as all time travel stories do, at least for me, because there's always some kind of plot hole but it's fine. Overall, I enjoyed reading this. I enjoyed finding out the mystery, but at times the story felt really long and the pacing was kind of off at times because most of the story is like flashbacks of Harry Ogg's life and him explaining things to us. So he'll be in the middle of a story about his fifth life and then in the middle of that story we'll get a flashback to his like third life or his, to his second life and like the fifth life story wasn't over. But that was my biggest problem with it and also I thought like the mystery whole aspect didn't really get going until like the last half to two thirds of the way through. But I thought it would have been interesting just to read about Harry August's like multiple lives so it didn't bother me too much. The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, also known as J.K. Rowling, 
This is a detective mystery where we follow a detective named Corman Strike who comes back from the military after he loses one of his legs. And we follow him as he investigates the apparent suicide of a very famous, like, important model. But her brother comes in and claims that it sh can't have been a suicide, so Coleman Strike decides to investigate it based on that. I've heard mixed things about this, but luckily I really enjoyed it. I don't read a lot of detective mysteries, so I can't be like, oh, this was like better than the others but it kept me engaged. I listened to the audiobook, which was read by Robert Glenister, and so maybe that helped. This was quite a long book, but I don't know, I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to continuing the series because there are two more books in it, or three more, I'm not sure, but there are more books in it, so I will definitely be picking up those in the future. And I gave this book four stars, I don't know if I mentioned that. P.S. I Like You by Casey West. This is just a cute story about a girl who writes song lyrics on her desk one day while she's bored in class and the next day she gets to class and finds that someone has written back to her on the desk and it kind of more ensues from there. This is like a contemporary romance so you can guess what happens and I don't know, I thought it was really cute. There was like a really interesting family dynamic. The main character is from a bigger family. She has three brothers and sisters and like they're just like a nice family and then we see like her relationship with her friend and like her relationship with music as well and like I don't know I really liked it it made me also fall in love with the hate to love trope again I don't remember what made me fall out of love in it, with it but this made me realize that I do still enjoy it so that's good The Girl's Guide to Conquering Life by Erica Catherman and Jonathan Catherman I received this book on NetGalley in exchange for an honest review and basically it's what the title says it's like a guide for girls to like conquer life and like it gives you like a bunch of how to's on like how to do various things like how to ask a guy out how to clean your room i feel kind of bad because for the majority of the book i thought i was reading another book so i was reviewing that book on goodreads and so i have to delete that whole review but i will read that book soonish so you'll see what that is but this book i gave three and a half stars it was fine it was kind of boring. I know it's probably not the easiest to make a bunch of how-tos very interesting, but there were like little sections in between that are supposed to be like inspiring and stuff, and those are pretty dry. I think that it did have some useful info that could be good for a teenage girl, or any teenager for that matter, um, that wants to know some certain things. But some of the how-tos really felt like they were there to fill space. Like one of them was how to open the door for someone else. You open the door. I don't like that didn't need to be in there overall I do think this could be a good book to keep handy for a younger teenager like maybe like 13 years old I think if you're older like 16 or 17 this isn't the book for you and definitely not to read straight through like I did like maybe like look through the table of contents and see what you want to know and then just read those into the water by Paula Hawkins I listened to the audiobook which was narrated by a full cast because there are many, many characters. This is actually my second Paula Hawkins book this year, um, which is saying something because I tend to not repeat authors a lot. But yeah, I read The Girl on the Train earlier this year, and then my hold for Into the Water came in. So I read it and listened to it. I gave it four stars. It is about a town. They have like a big cliff that a lot of people in the past have jumped off of. And so like that's kind of their thing, I guess. Like in the past it was like from witch hunts and things like that, like ended up with people thrown off the cliff into the water, heh, <laughs> title. A woman who was like investigating all those stories and like writing a book on that ends up jumping into the water. And her sister moves back to the town to take care of her daughter, um, the woman who <laughs> jumped into the water's daughter, sorry if I'm not explaining this well. And then we kind of follow the mystery of like why she jumped in the water or if she was pushed, like what happened that ended with her dying. And we get like many, many points of view. We get the sister's point of view, the daughter's point of view, like three of the detectives, some other people. It's a lot, which I didn't mind so much because the audiobook, I think, was helpful in like differentiating people and stuff. Um, so I didn't mind so much, but I definitely liked The Girl on the Train better. I just cared more about The Girl on the Train's mystery, I guess. And like this one just wasn't as good, unfortunately. I'm not sure what it is. I was also feeling a bit mysteried out also after reading The Cuckoo's Calling and then this. 
so that might have also affected it. But I still give it four stars. If you like thrillers, you might enjoy this. The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. This follows a girl named Eden who gets raped before her freshman year of high school by her brother's best friend and then this is told in the four parts of her high school like career so like freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, and senior year and how she's affected by that. I gave this book four stars. This is one of those books that's hard to review. It's hard to review because I can't say I enjoyed it because it was depressing and sad and all those things and also trigger warning for rape obviously. But I can say that I thought the book was well written and I thought it showed what it was trying to show in a well done way. Whatever Happened to Interracial Love by Kathleen Collins. This is a bunch of short stories by Kathleen Collins who was, no, yeah, who was one of the first like black screenwriters or something. Not 100% sure. I should have checked, but I didn't. So I gave this three and a half stars. I didn't love it which is disappointing because the person who like compiled this together obviously loved her very much. There were just too many stories that I just didn't like or get. Some of them are just so short that I was like, what did I just read? Like some of them were good and I enjoyed them, but there were more that I didn't enjoy than I did enjoy in this collection. So I gave it three and a half stars because like it is well written and just not for me, I guess. Finding Audrey by Sophie Kinsella. This follows a girl named Audrey who ends up with severe social anxiety after an incident at her school and her anxiety is so bad that she can't leave her house and she wears dark sunglasses all the time so she doesn't have to look at people. And I listened to the audiobook which was read by Gemma Whelan. I really enjoyed this. This was like another fun read. I gave it four stars. I was just smiling a lot while I was reading it. I don't have social anxiety so I can't say how accurate it is. This book shows a healthy relationship with therapy and medication I think so that's always good to read in a YA book. And like I said I just found the whole story like cute and really enjoyed my time reading. Audrey's whole family is kind of like a crazy yet normal family. Kind of like a sitcom family and it's just like fun. My only issue is that there's a conflict with her older brother and her parents and it's about video games and I'm really just tired of that. So much I want to tell you, Letters to My Little Sister by Anna Akana. This is Anna Akana's memoir, book, YouTuber book, I don't know. She's a YouTuber. I watch her YouTube videos. I enjoy her YouTube videos. And when she was 16 or 17, when she was a teenager, her younger sister committed suicide. And so, this is kind of her, a little bit of her reflecting on how that affected her in her life and also just showing like what her life is like now, I guess. I really enjoyed this. I think that there's some good advice in here. Anna has like gone through some stuff, um, not just in her personal life but in her career because she is a YouTuber but she also does make short films and she's trying to be a working actor and she's actually been in a couple of movies, I think. So there's that. So she does offer some good advice, I think, and I just enjoyed reading this. I listened to the audiobook, which was read by Anna Akana. Between the World and Me by Tana Nizi Coates. I started this book in May, I think, because I had an ebook, and then I DNF'd it because I borrowed the ebook from the library and I had to go back. And obviously, the hold list on this book is ginormous. So I ended up requesting the audiobook and I got that and so I just started the whole book over so this is just a review on the audiobook. I really like this. I would recommend listening to the audiobook. I can't say for sure if it's the fact that I did end up effectively reading the first like 50 to 60 percent twice but the first time when I was reading the ebook I found it a little hard to connect because I thought the writing was just like too highbrow for me but then when I was listening to the audiobook I found it much easier to connect and really feel what was going on what Coates was trying to say. This book is written as a letter to his son and it's just kind of the state of America at the time it was written. I mean, America hasn't really gotten better, but specifically how it affects black people and black lives. And yeah, I thought it was really, I thought it was really good. I would recommend it if you haven't read it already. A lot of people have already read it, but if you haven't read it already, read it. I think if you are black, you'll find a lot of reaffirming things in here. And if you're not black, you will learn something. So, like I said, you should read. Those are all the books that I read in July. This was a very long video. Thank you for sticking around. Yeah, if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up in the comments down below. Let me know what was your favorite book that you read in July. And also, I am looking for feedback on my channel. I'm not doing like a survey or anything, but if you have anything you want to 
you want me to do, you want to see from me, you think I do this badly, like I'm asking for any open honest advice or criticism, leave it in the comments down below, leave it on any video honestly. If you think, like if you think my, if you think I'm too loud, I'm too quiet, like anything, just let it all out in the comments down below because I really am looking for feedback, so yeah. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel because I make more videos where I talk about books. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!